Welcome to the final superhero film of 2016. And many might say it's the best superhero film of 2016. And this is the best podcast of 2016, World Class Bullshitters. Tonight I'm joined with Eric Louderback. Hi, uh, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm, no. I'm well, thanks for asking. I'm not wearing a shirt. I don't have pants on. Sweet. Uh, up next is the Dr. Phil Seitz. Doctor. Doctor. Doctor, doctor. Doctor. And the man who's going to nuke the country if Hillary Clinton wins, Dustin McNeese. <laughs> uh, guys, what would the Incredible Hulk be called if he were gay? What? An abomination. Trump 2016. <laughs> 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 oh my god, that was funny. So we just got out of Doctor Strange, and as usual in world-class bullshitters fashion, we're going to record a review for you guys and tell you what we thought. Um... We'll go in depth, so there's going to be spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, and you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch this video. Just come back when it's over. We're going and, to spoil uh, this for you like four-day-old milk. Well, mm -hmm. make sure to like it and share it, and visit incarnate-studios.com, where you can get the best t-shirts on the internet. And don't forget to hype it. <laughs> Buy a shirt, goddammit. Thank you, Phil. Your subtlety is what makes this show work. Just for you, Jeff. <laughs> All right, so the biggest question is, what did we all think of Doctor Strange? Phil? I loved it. I thought it was really great. Loudy? I would definitely call it the next morning after taking it out to dinner. All right. Now, Dustin, you haven't seen it, but you're very interested, correct? Right. Yeah, this is the first one that I'm going to actually listen to spoilers to first. Uh, I'm interested, but I'm not so interested that I have to avert myself from spoilers. So I'm just kind of here as the idiot buffer, and... Uh, I'll be guiding you guys with some questions as I want to know more. Well, that's perfect because not many of these reviews are going to be like that on YouTube. Most people are going to look into a camera and talk real fast and have a camera cut and then do some hand shit and try to be funny in front of a green screen. That's not world-class bullshitter style. We're going to sit down. We're going to get in-depth. Uh, we're going we're gonna to teach you something. So this movie starts out. You meet Dr. Stephen Strange. He's this great... Um, physician, a.k.a. surgeon, if I could remember the word. Neurosurgeon. And, neurosurgeon, correct. And um, you see that he's kind of cocky. But th that's my first complaint with this movie, is they don't, I don't think they make him cocky enough. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, I, I, I see where you think he could be a little bit cockier, but pretty much telling someone that they're wrong, saying that their patient is dead, when he's like, nope, this is all you have to do, I, I feel like that's pretty goddamn cocky. Like, this guy's dead. No, he's not. Watch this. So is he kind of like a Dr. House? Yes. Oh, he is God, yes. He was House. I was wondering why I loved it so much. Okay, yeah. So just from your little description, it sounds like House, which already sounds cool. Yeah. yeah he, he, the movie starts out with him walking into the... the a patient comes into the ER with a gunshot to the head. And he goes, oh, we're pronouncing him brain dead. We're going to harvest his organs. He goes, no, you're not. Uh, the bullet's still intact, so we're going to pull it out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's well, exactly what happened. Huh? And, he and he performs the surgery without the machine. Like, like it's going to take so many minutes to get this warmed up, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm going in myself. And he just literally, oh, like, oh, no. navigates in through this guy's opening in his head and pulls out this bullet and saves the family. And then you see him go to a uh, luxury party, and he has a car wreck on the way. Damages his hands, can never practice uh, medicine again, goes to the Far East to learn the mystic arts, and that's really the story of the film. By the way, it was a really cool car wreck. And it was a really cool car wreck, and I really liked his apartment. So what caused the car wreck? He was texting and driving, and there's actually a PSA at the end that says, don't drive distracted. Are you being serious right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, serious. Yeah. So... It's it's a movie with a, with a message, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Because like, what it is is he's like on his speakerphone during this drive, and he's driving like a fucking idiot, but in this really nice car, which is what makes me sad. I think it was a, a Lamborghini. It was something, man. I I didn't catch what it was. Mainly, it was a Lamborghini. It was all right, cool. Well, the three D glasses distorted some of my vision, so. No, your regular glasses distorted your vision. You, probably... you watched it in three D. Yeah. What a queer. <laughs> It, you know what? Go Bucks. Anyway, so um, he's looking down because like he's the the guy on the other end is like telling him, "What about this patient?" Because like he's trying to give him his next patient. He's like, "No, it's literally almost like house. Doesn't sound interesting enough." Nope. Now that I can work with. And the guy sends him the X-rays and he's looking at it. 
and it, like he's trying to go around this guy on this fucking mountain road, and then the, his front the front of his car clips the other one, and it's like he's flipping over the fucking rail and through the woods, and he might have smashed a small child in there. I don't know, but it was brutal. Pretty damn. You guys brutal. said it was visually stunning. This yeah, the, yes. whole, the whole movie was. Yeah, the whole movie was. I I don't like watching movies in 3D, especially in IMAX. This movie is one of those movies that you need to see in IMAX 3D. It was that. It was worth it. Uh, I almost feel like I wouldn't be doing it justice if I watched it in just regular standard high definition. Well, that's the reason I harped on going to see this one in 3D because I was like, I've been reading reviews. It's been out in Europe for a week or so, and I'm like, oh, this sounds good. And like, the visuals, the visuals, the visuals, and I figure, well, if everyone's talking about it in every review. Like, at least we should give this movie a, enough chance to go watch it in IMAX 3D. And Dustin, when we tell you more about this movie, we'll talk about how stunning the visuals get. Because, you know, I always harp on that scene in Ant-Man where he goes subatomic and he's, right. like, going through the dimensions. Like, imagine, like, a like a 20-minute scene all like that. This was Inception on steroids. Yeah. yeah. Christopher Nolan looks like a bitch after this movie came out. <laughs> Okay, so I just I just smoked DMT for the first time last week, so maybe I can appreciate that kind of scenery. Yeah, if you're gonna do that, go watch this movie on that because I was just sitting there with my mouth open, like, oh my god, this is amazing. I would like to see you going like, well, you'd freak out. I've seen you freak out. You would be <laughs> screaming at the screen. <laughs> so tell me, so tell me what inspires him then to go to the Far East to to learn mysticism. Well, what hands happens? are destroyed. Well, no, what happens is yeah, his hands are destroyed, and his physical therapist tells him about a guy who used to be paralyzed. He was in a bad uh, warehouse accident, and he was paralyzed from the chest down. And they said that, uh, Dr. Strange is like, that's a bullshit story, I don't believe you. So, one day, Dr. Strange gets the file in the mail that says it's not bullshit, and he goes and he tracks the guy down. The guy says, you gotta go to, what was it, Taj Moran or something, or whatever it was called. So, Comertage or something like that. It's a place. It's, like, it's like Comertage. Okay, Comertage. he has to go there. It's in the uh, in the Kathmandu. east. Kathmandu. Yeah, it's in Kathmandu, Nepal. So you see Doctor Strange travel there, and he meets the Ancient One, who basically knows his story, and he doesn't believe her at first, and then she, like, hits him, and his body, uh, his astral plane, like, his astral form leaves his uh, physical form, and he's like, oh my god, and then she's like, I'm gonna show you all this stuff that we can do. And then she does, and he's like, teach me, and then she kicks him out. <laughs> and then, to, uh... To kind of describe it for you, Dustin, it's literally what an out-of-body experience would look like. Okay. Yeah, like, there's a point where, like, uh... You know those gifts where they'll, like, zoom into someone's mouth, and they'll keep just zooming in repeatedly? <laughs> yeah. It's one of those. Like, that's how it ends. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and then there it's was, like, a... like, the one where his hands are growing... Off, like, his hand, like, his hands are growing hands. There were hands growing everywhere. That was awesome. And yeah. they all grabbed him, and... <laughs> Oh my god. His fingers were growing hands, which on those hands, the fingers were growing hands. It was nuts. It was the trippiest Marvel movie ever, and it was... I don't know if it was the most adult Marvel movie. I would say it's the most adult, adult Marvel movie, because it doesn't really deal with anything that's too childlike. It's, no. it's a guy whose ego is massive, and he loses it all, and he pushes everyone in his life away, and then he has to build himself back up, and the superhero fighting isn't really what you think. I mean, the, be the, the beginning scene is, to me was almost Tarantino-esque when they just they just show the silhouette of the guy getting beheaded. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. That was. Now, speaking of childish, what are the jokes like in this movie? Is your typical dance-off to save the galaxy, or what is it like? They were very... Um, I guess they were very educated. Yeah. They, they, were, they were jokes that you got to kind of think for a minute to get. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a few quick one-liners in there that you know quit, anybody would understand, but there's some of them you just you, you gotta think. I mean, I personally haven't seen any movies with like bitch and fight scenes that have also made me laugh at the same time with like their like decent jokes. This was one of those movies that actually had both. Yeah, the finale where he's fighting Dormammu, or not fighting, but he meets Dormammu. Well, not just Dormammu, but when he's fighting. The other guy, fuck's his name, uh, Kia, fucking son. Mads Mikkelsen's his real name. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, Dustin. Um, so there's a few jokes like where the guy's name is Wong, and he's like just like Wong. He's like Wong, like Beyonce, and he lists all these other people off with one names or like you know one name that they're known. It's like, like Cher, Bono. Like that. Yeah, and then at the end or later on in the movie, the guy's listening to Beyonce. That's like the only stupid people joke there is in this movie. Yeah. Okay. Because this isn't Guardians of the Galaxy level of like. 
stupidity. Oh, but uh, Kaecilius was the guy's name. Oh, okay. I did, I did so think. you said she kicks him out after this out of body experience. Why does she do that, and where does he go from there? He just for he stands outside of her door for four hours or five hours and just knocks up repeatedly. They basically keep testing him. Yeah, and then they let him in, and he starts training, and he becomes the best student they've ever had. He's really because he has like a photographic memory, and he basically studies for it like he did his uh, medical degree. And he's just light years ahead of everybody after he gets over the whole, like, first hump. And then, um, all of a sudden they're in this, uh, sanctuary place, and it gets attacked by these bad guys. And he gets blown through one of the doors, and it sends him to New York. And then the rest of the movie takes place in New York, with the exception of the, uh, fin uh finale. So tell me about the bad guys. What's their motivation? What's their connection to his training? Like, how does that all work? It's just so one bad guy. Okay. So it's one one bad guy who has like a bunch of like followers that well, followed him, and the bad guy was actually a student of the ancient one, uh, who Doctor Strange learns from, but the uh, but Kaecilius, uh wants uh, immortality, and um, you know power beyond belief, which he can find by gaining access to the dark realm. And uh, Jeff, what was the uh, villain's name? Not the, not the villain. But... Dormammu. Dormammu. So by gaining access to Dormammu's power, he then becomes even more powerful and pretty much tries to gain immortality from the Dark Realm. So basically, the Ancient One is there. She she's the one that teaches everybody, and they, they understand. You know, that's she, they get their powers from what she teaches. What hap The bad guy in this movie find he was a student of hers. He found out where her powers came from, which was the Dark Realm, which nobody else knew, and so he betrays her to try and bring forth the Dark Realm and let the Dark Realm take over Earth. So that's his motivation. He just wants absolute power and access to a secret that she withheld from everyone else. Basically. Okay. So what about his love interest? I was reading a lot about how people were speculating, oh, how important are the females in this movie going to be? Uh, was it Rachel McAdams? Yeah, she's in it for about ten minutes. She's in, Well, she's important to his story, but she's not important to the story of the film, if that makes sense. Okay. They were lovers in the past, and they grew apart, but they work at the same hospital. They're both doctors. And after his uh, injury, he basically blows her off, because she's like, oh, there's another purpose in your life you can find meaning blah 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 he's like i don't want purpose so basically he cuts those ties and he goes off to catman do and when he comes back to new york in that scene i was telling you about earlier um the bad guys attack him in the this house that he appears in and he gets stabbed and he doesn't know where to go so he basically transports himself to the hospital where rachel mcadams works to get healed and when she's uh, operating on him he leaves his body into his astral form, and he, there's a fight between him and another uh, henchman of the main villain. And it's really cool. It's just this astral fight, and it doesn't really affect anybody else except, like, a vending machine and something else. It's awesome, though. And that's all happening while she's performing surgery, and then I'm sure he returns to his body, and she doesn't even notice? No, she notices, because he starts talking to her in the very beginning, because she doesn't know. He gets stabbed in the chest. Right. In he the gets stabbed in the heart with some kind of object. And it's, like, spreading, and he's, like... She doesn't know where to uh, start the surgery, so he, like, appears to her and starts talking. He's, like, move here and do this. And so she does, and then he uh, starts the fight. And the, the way he defeats the villain in that fight is she takes the uh, defibrillator and charges it to, like, 360 joules, and it gives his body, like, all this extra power, and he fucking kills the guy, and he freaks out about killing the guy. So that's cool, then, that she has, like, an important role in powering him up to overcome his enemy. And then you don't, you don't really see her anymore in the movie. Like, uh, the Ancient One gets killed, they try to rescue her, and then that's it. I don't even, And Rachel McAdams, does she kiss him goodbye, and that's it? Yeah, right on the cheek, pretty much. Yeah. It was, it was, like, it was, it was like the way she was going in, it looked like it was kind of supposed to be a mouth kiss, but then it goes, like, right on the cheek, and then it was like, eh, awkward, and it's okay, cool, thanks. Yeah. So does this movie end on, like, a sad note with the Ancient One dying? Oh, no, that wasn't the end of the movie. Okay. The, the Ancient One dies probably about 75% of the way through. By the way, this movie's really short. It's under two hours. Uh, after she dies, 
the uh, bad guy, Mads Mikkelsen, has to just wants to destroy another one of these ancient um, houses. They're called sanctums. There's one in London that got destroyed. There's one in New York, and there's one in Hong Kong. He tries to take the one in New York, but he fails. He destroys the one in London, and then he's going to destroy the one in Hong Kong. So Doctor Strange, Wong, and Mordo, which is another guy that trains at the uh, school or the uh, sanctuary place, they go to defeat the bad guy in Hong Kong. So the fi- the finale takes place in Hong Kong, and Mordo's or er, not Mordo, uh, the bad guy's already destroyed the building. So they use this Eye of Agamotto incantation, and they reverse time. And they basically fight while time's going backwards. Oh, By the way, they used an Infinity Stone. Yeah, but the Infinity... It's not important that it's an Infinity Stone, because in the comic book, it's different. Like, it's... The Eye of Agamotto's the important part. Right. No, I get that. I was say it. It's an Infinity Stone, but it that contains comes... contains an Infinity Stone. Yeah, but that's later on. That's downplaying the importance of this thing. So basically, he uses this spell to reverse time. And then he doesn't, he can't really defeat the guy, so what he does is he goes to fight Dormammu, essentially, make a bargain with him in this other dimensional realm, and Dormammu kills him. And then he comes right back and does it again. Basically what he's doing is he's looping time infinitely until Dormammu agrees to make this bargain with him. So that's pretty much how he beats Dormammu. He, uh, I don't know, makes him crack. <laughs> yeah. He just, like, it'll show him walk in and get killed, like, I think he got killed 20 different ways. Pretty much. Yeah. So, so I guess his character is, is learning persistence. Like, when he went to the door and wouldn't leave until they trained him, or he wouldn't leave Dormammu until he got what he wanted. Yeah, something like that. But Correct. But that was the only way to defeat Dor- Doriamu, is that it? Dormammu. Or Dom- Dormammu. That was the only way to defeat him, was to bargain with him. And it was so cool. were there any other cool scenes in this film? Like, any standout sections of action or dialogue or anything like the, that? The Dormammu fight takes place on the like this other dimension, and it looks straight out of a Steve Ditko comic. I mean, I'm going to pull up an, an image to show you guys. But basically, the way Steve Ditko used to draw it is he would draw these like planet things that were connected. They almost looked like atom molecules. You know how they would show you those things in school, like build a nucleotide or whatever the fuck you would do in science class. Yeah. He basically fights in one of those, and it's like purplish, and it's bizarre. It's trippy. Yeah. How is the music for this film? Sweet. That, that was the only thing I didn't like about the movie. What didn't What didn't you like about the uh, music? I just I, I couldn't get into it. I didn't. It sounded like they were playing a sitar. It's a harpsichord yeah. chord and shit. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I, I didn't like it. Well, was, was, but did it feel mystical? Like, isn't that what that instrument's for? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It felt old. Very old school. Well, Dustin, it doesn't sound like all the other music. You know, like, I don't like the Avengers theme song. Actually, I kind of hate it. For as much as I like those movies, I hate that fucking chorus or whatever. It sounds like a generic cinematic uh, orchestral piece. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't know what... Like, the only superhero themes that I can name off the top of my head are, like, the old Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, and maybe part of the X-Men music. I don't know how to describe it. But Doctor Strange for the last... I think of all the MCU music, it's got the best. Jeff, if you're able to upload this during the video, uh, make sure to show the fans this image, because this just sold me on the film. The Steve, Steve Ditko drawing, that looks incredible. That's exactly what it looks like when he fights Dormammu. Pretty That's happy. fucking cool. Now, Dormammu's just a giant face that, like... What's the, what's the kind of... It's There's a name for, like, a an image that it's like a... It, basically, his face, like folds away, but it constantly folds. Like, it doesn't stop. It folds in onto itself. Oh, it's like a fractal? Yeah. Okay. Just imagine that and this. It was it was the trippiest shit you'll ever see in a movie, but it was amazing. Especially the part where he goes on the first outer body experience, and, like, he's flying around the universe and all this other shit. So, yeah. there are a lot of complaints, you know, with the trailer saying, this looks like The Matrix, this looks like Inception. Uh, yeah. Knowing those, uh, you know, concerns... Seeing the full-length feature film, uh, did you feel like that while you were watching it, or was it so different that that trailer was misleading? There were parts when I'm watching the film and I'm sitting there going, it reminds me a lot of The Matrix and parts of... When they're doing the fight scenes, that's where the Inception comes in. But yeah, but but if you take the story of Inception, it's nothing like it. It's not about a oh, no, escape. No, no, no. It's no. not about any of that shit. So people are kind of downplaying it. Yeah, Did the, it bother the, you guys when you were reminded of those other films? I didn't. No. I didn't think of the Matrix once. 
at all. Because there's, be honest, I hadn't heard anything about Matrix or Inception going into this film, so I those didn't bother me whatsoever. Because normally, okay. like I've seen the Matrix a dozen times. It's an okay movie. The only th- like it, you could say it's like Star Wars because it's essentially an old wise person teaches a young person or a younger person how to like enter a new world and do things. Like Luke when he learns the Force. That's the yeah, only gonna, connection. I'm not gonna lie. I did kind of get this Obi Wan Kenobi Darth Vader feeling when the uh, the Ancient One and Kaecilius are on that platform, uh, but just for like a brief second. Oh, I can see that. It's now complete. Yeah, it was yeah. like that because you talked about fight scenes. I haven't really brought them up yet. Besides the one in Hong Kong, there's the movie starts with a fight scene before you meet Doctor Strange, where like the planes turn sideways like the buildings turn sideways and they start to like shift and it's like a giant so, rubik's cube type of thing it's hard to explain i couldn't draw it to save my life it's fucking it was intense the visuals were intense so were there any standout acting performances everybody was good i mean ben, i know you don't like benedict cumberbatch but he does a good job here um how was they, the ancient one it was just if you've ever seen Tilda Swinton perform in another film, it's exactly like that. <laughs> okay. I mean, I like her as an actor. I don't think she, I think she's creepy looking, but that works to her favor. She's and, set for that she's one. Actually, role. bald in real life. She's weird in real life. Like I've read articles about her. Uh, everyone does a good job. The Stan Lee cameo's stupid, but whatever. Now, what, what what happened there? He's literally on a bus reading a book, and he goes, "Wow, that's crazy." <laughs> he doesn't even see the action. Now, now mind okay. you, when, when, while he's on that bus, uh, Doctor Strange and I forget who else they get like they get their faces smushed up against the bus as they hit it, and that's pretty much where they go, oh, that's hilarious or whatever. <laughs> that's crazy. Now the villain, how does he stack up against other MCU villains? Because we know the big complaint for that whole universe is all oh, weak villains. Does he do anything? Out of the ordinary, anything extra cool, or is he just your plain foil to the main character? In the beginning of the movie, he steals two pages out of this ancient ritual book. And he basically, at that point, unlocks the same powers that the ancient one has. So he can, she at that point, she's the only one that can manipulate the world. So when he reads those pages and deciphers them, he can twist the worlds just like she can. And he also kills the kills her, so I mean he's effective. He now uh, I wanted to bring up the connections to the MCU, which is what people are always like. They always like to hear about. So in the opening scene where Doctor Strange has his car wreck, they talk about the events of Iron Man Two. Do you remember Dustin, where Justin Hammer shows the video to Congress, where the guy's in the uh, robotic suit and it spins around? Yep. That guy didn't die. They pitched that surgery to Doctor Strange, and he says no. Oh, that's a kind of a cool little Easter egg. And they, that's all they mentioned briefly, like a military man, something severed spine, blah, blah, blah. Nope. And that's all he says, and it's never brought up again. So it's not overt. They're not, like, hammer it. Like, you have to know the MCU to make that reference. Yeah, I guarantee you 90% of the people that go see that won't know that's from that. I thought that was the surgery that distracted him, because that... Because when he said when he when they mentioned that uh, severed spine at the certain he, he mentioned no, like they, four vertebrae, and he says that one sounds interesting. And that's when the photos come through on his phone. No, it was the girl that had the elect the uh, device in her chest that some about electricity. Oh, okay. So how long of a period does this take uh, place over? Months. It doesn't really. It never says. And that's the one complaint I had. I don't know if I brought this up earlier in the thing. Like. He he goes and he has this wreck on the way to the party. I would have liked this movie even more had he had his wreck on the way home from the party so we could have seen him act the way he acts before his accident. Because he mm-hmm. acts as his accident within five minutes of being on screen. Like, he's, he does the surgery, he walks down the hallway, and then he's it shows him walking his house in a tuxedo and then he wrecks his Ferrari, or a Lamborghini. Like, that's it. I would have liked a few more minutes of him as, like, pre- Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Strange. So you'd like to see the difference, the before and after, that juxtaposition yeah. more. Yeah, that's what I think it needed that. Other than that, it was it was set. Now, what was your question again? Oh, how long of a period of time does this take place over? You said probably a few months, and then you said... Oh, um, 
Well, what happens is it doesn't ever say, like, it doesn't say how, okay, you know he's in therapy for a while, and then you know he goes away for a while, and then he had written Rachel McAdams' emails, but she didn't respond, and then when he meets her, they never say, like, it's been so long, like, they just are like, oh, you know. Do you think the Iron Man 2 reference, though, helps anchor, I guess, at least a starting point for the story? Because we know that took place in the late, you know... Well, no, because Stark Tower from Age of Ultron's in this in the very beginning, too. They show that tower. Every time they show New York City, they show the tower. And they okay. mention the Avengers. Yep. But they don't mention the events in New York City. If you watch the Netflix shows, they're always like, the event, the event, the event in New York the City. The incident? Yeah, the incident, whatever they call it. It's like that. They never brought that up once, which was nice. Because normally they fucking harp on it. Right, so... Now that magic has been introduced, um, what what do you guys see this doing affecting MCU from here forward? Now that we have alternate dimensions, alternate realities, do you think it's going to shift the the kind of storytelling that we see? I think it's going to give the heroes better footing to fight Thanos. And I think it's going to also allow characters to die and then be brought back. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, now you can manipulate time. Yeah, I have a feeling that during the battle when they fight Thanos in Infinity War, like in the comics, like Iron Man gets his head ripped off, people are murdered, blah blah blah, and it shows it in the book. I think people are going to die, and Doctor Strange is going to be summoned at the end of the first movie or whatever to why uh, spin time backwards and save the people. Do you think he's going to have a huge role in the battle against Thanos? Well, yeah, because let me explain. At the end of this movie, there's two post credit sequences. There's the... I'll tell you the final, final one first, because it sucks. So, Mordo, the black dude, who's white in the comics with a goatee and a widow's peak, he... In the comic books, he's Doctor Strange's nemesis. But in this movie, he's his friend. So, after he learns about the Ancient One and that she's not as pure as he thought, he becomes evil himself. And he basically takes away the power from that guy who mastered his uh, injury, the one that had the spinal cord injury. Yep. Uh, he takes away his power. But the good one, which is the earlier one, is you see Doctor Strange sitting down talking to a dude, and here's Thor. Oh, that's and, cool. And Thor comes to him, and he tries to offer Thor tea. And he's like, Thor's like, I don't drink tea. So then he gives him a giant beer. And you see Thor take one sip, and he drinks the whole beer, and then all of a sudden Doctor Strange like refills the beer, and Thor's like really impressed. He refills it with his mind. Yeah. So, so what, what they're doing with that first scene then is setting up for obviously Avengers three. Second one is setting up for Doctor Strange two. No, they're yeah. setting up for Ragnarok. He said he's talking about why did you bring Loki to Earth, and he says we have to find my father. And Doctor Strange goes, "Okay, I'll help you." Yeah, that was all that was said. Yeah. But Loki, here's the thing: Loki is taking. Odin's place. That's the big thing. That's, okay, I like Thor The Dark World. I don't think it's a bad movie. Yeah, the last scene of that movie, I think, is Odin sitting on the throne and the camera pans and it's actually Loki in disguise. Right. I'm really curious to see that resolved. That's the one big thread in the Marvel Universe that I'm curious to see. It, seemed, it sounds like from taking what we know about Dark World and what we heard in the cutscene, um, sounds like Loki is leading... Thor on a witch hunt. Well, we'll see. I think Thor Ragnarok's next year, right? That is summer, I believe. May. Well, it's going to be better than Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which I don't <laughs> care about. That movie's going to... It's it's probably not going to suck. I'm not going to preemptively say it's going to suck, but it's going to bring out the worst type of comic book fans. I will say my 15-year-old sister knows shit about comics, but she's obsessed with Guardians and its fucking soundtrack. I hate the music in that movie. That's why I don't like it. Because those were all songs I hated. Do they have any real world music besides the Beyonce song in this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I'm wrong. Thor Ragnarok is November 3rd. Oh, okay. That's a whole year. Fuck, yeah. That is literally one year away. Dustin, there's a... Uh, what Doctor Strange does during his surgeries is he plays like a, a music oh. game where he'll be working and somebody will play a song and he'll be able to name it instantly in the year and all that stuff. Okay. So, that's kind of his uh, thing. So there's about five or six popular songs. So what would you guys rate this out of out of ten? If you had to right now, I know you guys, fresh eyes, just walked out of there. Nine. 
I give it a nine out of ten. I'd give it a nine, nine two five, maybe nine and a half. So Jeff, you've already mentioned some of the stuff you would have liked to see, like more of his backstory before the change. Uh, Eric and Phil, what would it have taken for you guys to give it a ten? Um, I, like I said, I wasn't a fan of the music. That was one thing that brought that number down for me. Um, I agree with Jeff. I would have liked to see a little bit of the, more of Doctor Strange before he became the hero. Uh, I also thought that the movie it it was only an hour and a half, so I guess it felt to me it felt kind of rushed a little bit, just a tiny bit. I mean that's one of my complaints too. I did I do feel like it was kind of rushed. Um, I feel like we got to the end way too quick. Um, I would have also liked to see a little bit more of the backstory as well. Now, one other thing that kind of got to me is I I don't I, I guess I don't know enough about Doctor Strange to maybe understand why this makes sense or appreciate it as much. But I feel like it should have been maybe him overcoming Kaecilius instead of going up to. Um, uh, the 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 other realm and just pretty much trying to break that guy until he wanted until he decided okay I will bargain with you you know this that and the other I feel like it should have been an overcoming of Caecilius and his disciples instead of that but that's just now Jeff how do you feel about that story point I liked it because it up until that point the movie was great and I had no complaints but it would have ended like a lot of other superhero movies but for example. Uh, in the first Iron Man, let's say, I don't know if this is a good example. Let's say he beats Iron Monger, right? But let's say they had already established the Mandarin. Let's, go, let's say he like interacts with the Mandarin and barely beats him. Like Doctor Strange is not ready. Like he never he never finished his training. He was never uh, awarded like the rank of master. Well, he was ranked master at the end of the movie, and then he took uh, what you call it, Sorcerer Supreme will be his new title down the road. I liked it because it was it was such a different way to end the movie that he you know interacted with Dormammu it wasn't even that he it wasn't even the end of the movie it was after he defended New York that the that the uh the ancient one tried to give him the title of master but he's like I am doctor I am doctor strange not master strange not mr strange I am doctor strange yeah to save the one life his own yep so, so where does this rank among other MCU films for you guys Let's see. I like it more than... That's what I was going to ask you, Jeff, because you said maybe the best mo Marvel movie, superhero movie of the year. No, I didn't say I was that. Say, you said that at the beginning. No, I said it could be. That was just yeah. that was an intro for the show. Okay, it's, not well, than, it's not better than Civil War. I, it's I still not... got to question you. See, that's what we call in marketing a hook. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> no, it's not... Look, it, I, I got it under... I like Ant-Man, Avengers, Iron Man, and the last two Captain America movies more than it, if we're just doing straight MCU movies. So that means I like it more than Thor, Guardians of the Galaxy, Incredible Hulk, the first Iron Man, or the first Captain America, the third Iron Man, and the second one, and Thor the Dark World. So I like it a lot. I like it more than most superhero movies. And I don't think it's going to change, because there's a lot of superhero movies that I just, <coughs> I, you know, can't get into. I'd say it's in my top five. Yeah, we're definitely in my top three. Is, are we just talking MCU or all Marvel? Yeah, I, my I'm question talking was MCU. Um, Laudy, you said top three. What two beat it, and why is it so high up? Keep in mind, Laudy hasn't seen probably what half sixty percent of the yeah. Marvel universe. My 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 Marvel my Marvel um, knowledge is the Avengers movies. Um, God, uh, I Iron think maybe the 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 second Iron Man. Uh, <laughs> So you've watched two, a great one, a good one, and a shitty one. You're so shit. How did you get hired on this podcast? You're shit in the bed, Lally. Hey, you're I... fucking fired. Don't ever come back to the group. You've watched these. Okay. <laughs> well, guys, good night. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, Coach Lally. Wish I could say the same. Phil, you said <laughs> top five. Um, my favorite is Civil War, uh, followed by the first Avengers. Captain America 2, Age of Ultron. So what makes this better than the other, what, eight or nine? I don't, I, I think one of the things that Jeff said he had in the past was dreading was bringing magic into the MCU. 
I actually like the aspect of them bringing magic into the MCU. Um, I, I felt this, I, like everybody's saying, this movie was visually stunning. It, it really kept me enthralled, and it's one of the, it's, you know, every other Marvel movie is, what, almost two hours. So you get to the end of this. I'm, I got to the end of this, and I'm like, I want more. I don't want, I didn't want this to end. Why was this so short? So. Oh, what it. I like is that it's not, it feels like it's part of the MCU, but it's finally different. All the Iron Man movies and Avengers movies are the same. Yeah. I mean, I'm really tired of, like, the, the Robert Downey Jr. one-liner, people stop and express, or respond, and the crowd laughs. They didn't have those moments in this movie. It was nice to get a break. Now, I'm fine with them in other movies, but not every single movie. Um... I still think I liked Ant Man more for an origin story that's more recent. I I found Paul Rudd more likable and I liked his story. Doctor Strange's journey is literally just to get his hands back so he can operate again. Ant Man's was a lot more emotional and had more depth and there were more people's lives on the line as opposed to Doctor Strange's thing. It was just about his own personal journey. So, but I'm more interested to see where he goes next as opposed to Ant Man. Like I don't really care. I'll see Ant Man and the Wasp. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not curious. Like, oh, I wonder what he's doing. Like, I'm. I wonder what Doctor Strange gonna, is going to encounter next. Right. So you guys have seen him interact with Thor. What other hero? You got to pick one. Are you most excited for him to cross paths with? Who, Doctor Strange? To cross paths with? Um. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not looking forward to is Iron Man. Oh, you, <laughs> you took the one that I was actually excited for. Because I'm really just tired of, like, he's going to make some quip about, oh, magic, blah, 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 oh. And it's like, shut the fuck up, Tony. Like, <laughs> this dude could fucking make your head disappear in a few seconds. His, yeah, his, I, I'm, I'm going to steal loudies and I'm going to say his wit would go very well with uh, Tony Stark's. It's just, the, it's just the battle of the cocky egos. Yeah, I, I feel like they could go back and forth. I'm so. looking forward to Tony Stark taking a backseat in a movie. Yeah, that's never gonna happen. I have to I'm saying when that happens, I'll be very happy, because I liked the beginning of Civil War. Is still my favorite. The beginning was very much a Captain America film. Then Iron Man rolls up, and then it's like an Avengers film. And yeah. I don't really want to. I want to have like when Infinity War happens. I really want to see the character shine through. I don't want it to be Iron Man and his amazing friends. <laughs> right. It's that really. Was... Got, it's got to be all the Avengers, even fucking Hawkeye. Like he needs to stand out. Iron that, Man. That was my biggest issue with Civil War. It was more like an Avengers film than anything. Yeah. I'm gonna say so... from to answer the question, Dustin. I'm looking forward to Spider Man interacting with Doctor Strange because. At least it'll be interesting to watch him interact, like, to see the shit. Because Iron Man would make some stupid joke and try to act unimpressed. Like, CM Punk, he'd just try to be cocky and arrogant. spider man like, oh my god, what is this? And he would make all these, like, res he would respond to this shit entertainingly. Well, that's cool, Mr. Strange. It's Doctor. Yeah, that would be funny like that. Like, Tony Stark would be the worst. I think another one that would be shitty would be like, well, he would be a cool one. Uh, what's his face? Batista from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, Drax? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking hilarious, because he takes everything so literally, and you can't take this magic shit literally. So that would be interesting to see. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna change mine real quick. I would love to see him interact with Vision. The Vision, well, that'd be cool, but the Vision has to die. I'd well, rather see them fight each other. Well, and that's, that's actually, Vision connects to my next question, is now that we have Doctor Strange who can manipulate time, reality, all that shit... Is he, right now, the most powerful character uh, in the MCU, not counting, like, Thanos or whatever? No. I still think Thor is. Or not Thor. Uh, Vision. But you think Vision's, Vision's more powerful? I do. I don't. Doctor Strange can manipulate time and space. The Vision can't. The Vision just has the mind gem. He has the mind stone. Yeah. The mind stone. So, with the Eye of Agamotto and shit, Doctor Strange could just... <laughs> do everything to him. I'm genuinely surprised how much I like this movie because I've read Doctor Strange comics as a kid and I thought they sucked, and then I read them as an adult from the '80s just because I picked them up for like a quarter each and I thought they were all right. But this makes me want to go back and read more. I'm See, almost... I went into it like Loudy, but I I knew nothing about Doctor Strange, so I was pleasantly surprised. 
Well, the comics are not going to be too much like the movie. The movie was MCU-ified. They definitely made it... I wouldn't say it's for everybody. I'd say this is the smartest MCU movie, because it deals with shit that the average person doesn't even think about. Like, the metaphysical, uh, your chakras, you know, uh, energy, and all that kind of stuff. The average person isn't thinking about that shit. For it, somebody who has read the comics and now seen the movie, what is the biggest difference between the comics and the movies, Jeff? I've only read a handful of comics. I'm not... I would never call myself a big Doctor Strange fan. I well, was from like, what you've read. Well, yeah, how, how's his character compared it's, to it's one... The, it's the same. Okay. Like, that's the one thing about the MCU. They always get the characterization right, and the designs are always spot on. Unlike the fucking DC universe where they make everything, I don't know, techno and stupid, and oh, we gotta make it hip and cool for the Top teenagers. Topic. Yeah, like Harley Quinn looks like a fucking idiot. Like, that <laughs> oh is the God. dumbest Here design. Back hey, to Harley Quinn. Gangster Joker alone. Yeah, Gangster Joker. I'll put it like this. This is truly... I'm going to make a video about this later on in the uh, year, or this month, but this is literally the year that Marvel finished DC. Everything Marvel had, Civil War, Deadpool technically, and now Doctor Strange, beat the piss out of Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. And if you, even if you want to throw out there the Fathom event of the killing joke, it still doesn't compare to this. Mm-hmm. Doctor Strange was better than all the DC movies, and it's really... It's a good year when you can't decide which Marvel movie you like more. Because if you go back to 2011, a lot of people are going to say they like Captain America more than Thor, or the other way around. But this one is hard, you know. Dustin, I could honestly see you liking this movie a lot more than you think you're going to like it. No, and it, you see, the visuals you sent me and some of the stuff you guys have talked about definitely make me excited to see it next week. Uh, you won't be disappointed. I guarantee you. <coughs> It's going to change the way you think about superhero movies. Hey, Jeff, quick question. You said technically for uh, Deadpool. What, what, what do you mean by technically a DC movie? No, Mar- well, I mean, it's a it's made by 20th Century Fox, but Deadpool is a Marvel character. Okay. So, for example, all the X-Men movies are owned by 20th Century Fox, like mm-hmm. distribution rights, but they're all Marvel characters, but they're not from Marvel Studios. Will I you guess. please fire Loudy? Yeah. This is the last time Coach Lottie ever appeared on the planet Earth. I'm going to go to his house and shit in his mouth when he's sleeping, and he will die. Who said I'd be asleep? <laughs> you're going to be. You're going to You're gonna sleep one day, and I'm going to wait. And I'm going to shit. Shiza. Dustin, do you, right, have, do you guys have anything else you want to, I guess, discuss before we wrap this up and, and release it to the world? You go, go watch this movie with an open mind to have your mind blown. Don't expect a joke every five minutes, but you'll get them like every 20 minutes and they'll be good. And, uh, I think if you're uh, an older person, maybe if you're not like 15 years old and you're not looking for like civil war level action, I think you'll be impressed with this because the visuals are amazing and the story's not slow. It's so short. The shit happens all the time. There's not like a, a down moment. If that sounds like a positive to you, go watch this movie. Yeah, definitely, because if, you, if you're not paying attention, you will miss something. Definitely go see this movie. I recommend you go see it in IMAX 3D. Oh, yeah. The doctor, sure. wants you to, the doctor wants you to see it twice and call him in the morning. The doctor approves of the doctor. So World Class Bullshitters gives Doctor Strange a 9 out of 10. So is there anything else you guys want to talk about this week? Uh, anybody got any news? Well, Doctor Strange came out. (laughs) (laughs) Are we going to go see see Doctor Strange? I I might actually take my mom to see it on Tuesday, because she's into this kind of stuff. And I figure she'd be impressed. Jeff, do you know where Wendy's is? Uh, no. (laughs) Did you guys uh, see the new Wonder Woman trailer? Yeah. Not yet. Well, if you want to hear my thoughts, you can listen to the video on the channel, but Dustin and Phil, what do you guys what do you guys want to say about it? I thought it I, I thought it looked it. good. I was a little pissed by the generic soldier fires a random bullet that kills someone she loves. Like how would he have that kind of precision? That bitch was swinging between a cliff. Um, I don't know how she carries a sword in her ass crack and a dress and nobody notices it. And there's a fat woman at the end, so I'm kind of <laughs> skeptical. Wait, Megan McCarthy's in it? She looks like it, and she acts just as shitty. 
Who's Megan? I'm at Melissa. Fuck, I'm tired. Shut up, Phil. God damn it, you're fired again. I didn't know I was even rehired. Uh, I have not seen the trailer yet, but I will watch it as soon as we get off this podcast. You know, like I told you in person, Phil, you're not going to see anything. Oh, I'm sure. I, I'm I'm not excited at all for Wonder Woman. I'm expecting the worst. So. Yeah, and I mean, it's going to get a big pass because of these SJW people are going to praise it. But it's not, I don't, I think it's going to be mildly, it'll be, I don't think it's going to make anywhere near as much as Suicide Squad. And Batman v Superman is going to beat it. I think Batman v Superman is going to be the biggest DCEU movie. I don't think Justice League is going to beat it. No. After how terrible Batman v Superman was, I can't see it doing any better. Well, it's not like it's just one bad movie. It's bad movie after bad movie after bad movie. People are going to lose the faith. Or have lost it already. I can't... You go to any uh, message board about the DCEU, and it's always pretty negative. It's not like, oh, this was great, or this is kind of good, or let me explain why I like it. It's, this movie sucked. Idiots like Marvel. It's for kids. I mean, it's just a bunch of fighting. And now the Flash director left. DC has got some serious issues. Yeah. Well, the Flash director obviously isn't the only director that left because we saw that the Deadpool director, um, what was his name, Tim Miller? Yeah. He left too, and now that he's gone, the composer Junkie XL also just left. So for whatever reason, I don't know if it's Ryan Reynolds' ego or, or what, but people are leaving this film, and it kind of makes me scared for it. I wouldn't mind to see this one fail. Just to prove, like, filmmaking is a collaborative effort. And even as... Uh, much as Disney has a grasp over the MCU, it's still a collaborative effort. Why did he leave the film? Uh, the director, I guess, was butting heads with Ryan Reynolds, and ultimately the studio sided with Ryan Reynolds because they think that he's God's gift to their franchise. And so the director went a separate way because he wanted to stylize the film and not make it a uh, cut and paste from the previous one. And Ryan Reynolds is like, no, let's stick with what works. So he just left. <laughs> I think uh, anybody, I think there could have been a handful of people to play Deadpool that would have done just as good a job. Because the jokes aren't even that original. The second time around is not going to be as good. You rarely get a sequel. Like, you go know, from Star Wars to Empire. It's lateral step in quality. They're both excellent movies. Uh, Spider-Man to so Spider-Man 2, it gets better. Uh, I considered Batman Begins and Dark Knight a lateral step. I think those movies are both great. This one, uh, I don't see them ever recapturing the excitement. Like, with Guardians of the Galaxy, they're harping on the same shit. It's Groot is cute, hooked on a feeling, joke. That's what they're selling that movie on. Deadpool's gonna be violence, gore, sex joke. Mm -hmm. I think what made Deadpool great was the shock value. You know, don't forget seen... the dick jokes. All right, we had seen so many of these, you know similar style superhero films, then you get one that shows tits, that has a bunch of drugs, that has all this other shit. You're like, oh, that's cool. But how many times can you do that before it becomes just like everything else? Yeah, and I think, for me, I know this is just me being cynical, but the fan base has burnt me out on it. So, me personally, I'll go see Deadpool 2, because I really like Deadpool 1, but you people out there that are out, oh, have you seen Deadpool? Yeah, motherfucker. Have you ever seen Ghost World? No, you haven't. And if you have, you didn't even know it was a comic book movie. So, <laughs> chill the fuck out. Like, those are the type of people. I'm just getting fed up with those people. And I feel like they only gravitate towards Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool and the really, like, easily accessible franchises. Yeah. But look it, you guys had not seen or read Doctor Strange or knew anything about Doctor Strange, and you were blown away by this movie. At least the MCU brand knows how to interest old fans and new fans and create new fans. Like, with every movie. I mean, every everyone's uh, every MCU movie is everyone, someone's first MCU movie. And it usually gets them hooked. I don't know. Most people that I talk to, if they like one movie, they like a multitude of them. Like, Dustin, I know your wife loves all of them, right? Yeah, she's she's kind of a horror like that. <laughs> and you said she likes Benedict Cumberbatch anyway? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think she's oh. ever come across him. Oh, okay, well, uh, she'll like this movie and she'll probably like him. That makes me sad, because he's so ugly. They give him a hairpiece and a goatee, and he looks normal. Oh, yeah, just cover up, cover everything up. Yeah, there's for a good chunk of the movie, he has a beard. 
because he's out, he can't shave. His hands are always shaking. Like they're ew. that's one thing I got to say they did well in this movie is uh, they didn't just like have his hands magically heal. He has like big scars and like cuts on his hands, so his hands look really gross. And at the very end of the movie, in the post credit sequence, he has the gloves on like Doctor Strange wears. So it was pretty neat. Well, at least his hands match his face then. So. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Uh, really quick, Suicide Squad, some news there. Warner Brothers said that it was a success because of how diverse it was. I don't know how you measure that. I don't know if they sat in every theater in America and go, oh, there's way more minorities here than usual, but they're tooting that horn. What do you guys yeah. think about that? Warner Brothers, got- go fuck yourself. They must have gotten diversity dollars. It's bullshit there, Dustin. I think you and I are in the same boat. It's it's it, You can't really quantify film success because it was diverse. For example, uh, I'm trying to, okay, I can't think of an example. But like Suicide, Suicide Squad damaged the DCEU brand, you know? This like diversity for diversity's sake isn't a good business strategy when it comes to entertainment. I don't think it's a good but business strategy. It was an awesome me. movie because it wasn't all white people, obviously. I can show you a movie that's four white dudes and it's some of the, one of the best movies out there. I don't give a shit. I mean, I know you're being sarcastic, so I'm not taking it seriously. I'm just talking to the, the idiots that would listen to this and think diversity's good for diversity's sake. No, it's not. This is the whitest episode of World Class Bullshitters, and it's not the worst episode of World Class Bullshitters. Oh, we've so. had stinkers. Yeah, especially the Steve Harvey episode. <laughs> hey, you leave Steve Harvey alone. All right, and I will never bring him up again on this show. Suicide Squad is if you took the paddles and hit the DCEU with it, trying to bring it back to life... And then you got a heartbeat, but now it's just sitting on life support, and you're waiting for somebody to pull the plug when they release the Wonder Woman movie. It's like that episode of pa- uh, not Power Rangers, Family Guy, where they go, <laughs> he's either like um, it's clear, and he, he hits the guy, and he does it again, and he brings him back to life. I'm like, Doctor, you're a genius, you saved my husband. He goes, clear again, and kills him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Even how better. I feel. <laughs> Even better. Well, so we got a big episode next week, right? Uh, well, no, technically this is not an episode of World Class Bullshitters. This is only a Doctor Strange view, so next week's only episode 49. Well, but I took next week off of work. Fuck, I guess we'll make episode 50 next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, because I thought, you know, I, I, I got the timetable out, and I go, okay, I was just on 47. And then I plotted it out on the work calendar and asked for it off. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. We're going to call this episode 48. And, uh, 49. episode 49, sorry. You know what we should do is just erase the Steve Harvey one and make this two episodes. <laughs> that, was, that was garbage. Well, we can consider this an episode, and I got a piece of news. All right. Uh, Nintendo has decided to call it quits and kill the Wii U. Yes. Uh, the final console will roll off the production line on Friday, November the 4th which would be when this airs, and that will be it for the Nintendo Wii U. Uh, They didn't say when they'll stop making games, uh, but they will stop console production Friday. Didn't buy one, didn't want one. Uh, You know, good riddance. But you did play it. Of course I played it. Doesn't mean I... They didn't make any money from me on it, so whatever. Yeah. No, that's just like, yeah, I'll watch a girl fuck a horse, but I'm not going to go, like, fuck a girl that fucks a horse. <laughs> that's probably one of the most oh, eloquent ways to put it, Dustin. I just, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, Dude. the man's not a point. Yeah, that's... Dustin gets it. <laughs> that's going on the list. <laughs> oh, you just made the list! <laughs> oh, fuck you, Chris Jericho. Oh, I got some uh, news. They're remaking Starship Troopers. I'm looking at that article right now, and yeah. It's gonna. Yeah. St- uh, I don't know if it's gonna star, but if it doesn't star The Rock, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> well, yeah, the guys that are doing uh, that are writing the film are writing The Rock's latest uh, Baywatch movie. So well, that movie. I, oh, speaking of The Rock, I just saw San Andreas this past week. It was uh, forgettable. I think all I had going for it was that hot redhead from True Detective. Oh, Alexandra Daddario. Yep. Oh God, did you see the movie? No, no, my grandma and uh, wife did because they are into shit movies. So, <laughs> they're the mom and the daughter both have big jugs, so they did really good casting. <laughs> good. <laughs> well, the, have you ever seen Sin City? 
Uh, long time ago, don't remember shit from it. Okay, well, there's a lady that's in that movie. She plays... Oh, you know who this lady is. She's also in Watchmen. She's a uh, Silk Spectre 1, the original okay. one. Okay, yeah, I like her. Yeah, she plays the mom in San Andreas. Okay. And the story is that her and The Rock got a divorce after their other daughter died. And so she starts dating this rich billionaire. And then there's this earthquake, and all this shit goes down. And the rich billionaire deserts the daughter... And then he gets killed in the accident, and uh, that's, that's all the plot development there is. Man, I've never seen a story where a divorced family reunites in the midst of a great tragedy. That's that's good writing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just ends with, uh, like, the guy that she goes with plays Mr. Fantastic, and he's such a dweeb. Oh, that little, that young guy? Oh, no, that's, no, the uh, original Mr. Fantastic, Ewan Gruffin, from the old, uh, one Jessica Jessica Alba Alba. One? Yeah, okay. the the somehow better than the new one versions. <laughs> well, because Jessica Alba was naked in that one, so. Yeah, and you have Chris Evans as the Human Torch, because you know the Human Torch isn't black. <laughs> so he speaking talks. of Starship Troopers, they better have titties in it because that's all I remember from watching it in my childhood. I saw that movie in theaters. No, was it Denise Richard who showed her titties, or was it some other girl? Dina Meyer showed her tits. Denise oh. Richards has been in Playboy, so if you ever want to see. What she looks like upstairs and down. Okay. Was she in Wild Things with Charlie Sheen? She was. Okay, yeah, I think she was naked there, too. I watched that when I was 15. <laughs> she Denise Richards still looks good. She was in a Bond movie. Uh, she was in other stuff. I don't know what else she was in besides the Bond movie and the movies we just mentioned. I'm looking at her right now from a still shot from Starship Troopers, and she looks like a hotter version of the girl that played Enchantress in Suicide Squad. All Cara Delevingne? Yeah. Those eyebrows. Yeah, I can I can deal with the eyebrows. Cara Delevingne's just got a weird body. Here you go. Here's here's uh, Denise Richards in Playboy. I hope you guys enjoy that. Good Jeff, you're such a good friend. Well, I just jerked off right before the show, but I'm going to have to do one afterward. Talk about a bookend. But here you go. Here's a better shot that shows some, uh, some bush. All right, well, I guess that'll be... Uh, hold on. We... Coach Loudy, do you have any life lessons you'd like to share? Oh, all right, gang. Everyone, take a knee, gather around, shut the fuck up. Here we go. Guys, I just want to let you know, if you're ever going to join a podcast about pop culture, make sure you know about pop culture instead of trying to bullshit your way through everything. Because if you've only seen, like, six of the 9,000 Marvel movies, the Dr. Phil will do nothing but give you shit, not only on the podcast, but in person. So, if I can give you any advice, uh, sucks to suck, don't suck. All right, and that has been another life lesson with Coach Loudy. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the final. Final. The final life, life lesson. You know oh, yeah. What, you know what? No, 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 this won't be the final life lesson. No, you're I'll fucking fired, fire, damn it! You know what? I'm suing I'm suing the doctor for malpractice. This is fucking what you, shit. What are you suing me for? I didn't charge you anything. I just said malpractice, you dumb cocksucker. Listen. How is it yeah. malpractice if I didn't charge you? Because you're a you're shitty fucking patient. doctor. You're not my patient. <laughs> All right, calm down there, Steven. <laughs> so, we'll do a little bit of fan mail. This is the first episode of World Class Bullshitter since Schlocktoberfest ended, and, like I said, it was not that big of a hit. Unless every video gets a thousand views, I will not be doing Schlocktoberfest again next year. Thanks for the fans that are replaying the videos constantly. I appreciate that. Uh, there's some dickheads that are really upset that I don't like Rob Zombie. Well, fuck you guys. I don't like Rob Zombie. He's shit. And if you like him, I question your entire existence. Because Rob Zombie's a shit fucking actor. Okay, he's I do like the Devil's Rejects. Director. But do you like everything he's ever done? No, no, but Devil's Rejects is my favorite, uh, horror film. Ugh. Of all of them? Of all of them, man. It's a psychological one. He fucking, he masturbates a girl with his handgun in front of her husband. That's right up my alley. And he's that, got a point, yeah. That is right up your alley, but I still consider everything Rob Zombie's ever touched bullshit. No, it, that he's, shaped he's, my childhood. He, that movie came out when we were, like, mid-teens. And I was still a boy. You <laughs> still are in many ways. I was 16 <laughs> when that movie came out. I like Rob Zombie's music, at least some of it. So, thanks, Rob. I guess you Drag did good there. Uh... I don't even like Dracula. Uh, let's see, I guess I'll read some fan mail from last week's terrible episode of World Class Bullshitters, the Steve Harvey episode. Dion and everyone just, we all shit the bed. So, let's... Is that a comment? No, that was just me. 
that was just me saying we shit the bed because uh, the fans were trying to be nice and say this wasn't a bad episode, but it was a bad episode. Let's get real, people. It, it's our worst episode, hands down. Uh, let's see. Phil, you were missed last week by Brian Lape. Oh, thanks, Brian. He said he bring you bring the best out of Dion. Do I? I don't think so, but he thinks you do. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that Jeff brings out the best in Dion, but okay. I think alcohol brings out the best in Dion, but okay. Second. White women. I would (laughs) would argue that they bring out the worst in Dion because he becomes a liberal all of a sudden. Was Dion not wearing his wife beater last week? Yeah, he wasn't doing it enough. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah, this is uh, is this the last episode before the election? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, Someday. some people might uh, move Get to out Canada. And vote, you motherfuckers! Yeah. Trump 2016. <laughs> now, I say a lot of stuff that I don't mean on here. Like I would fuck a girl who's fucked a horse, but I'm serious when I talk about voting for Trump. You better fucking vote for him. If Hillary wins, we riot. <laughs> if Hillary wins, I demand an investigation into uh, voter fraud. Yeah. That bitch better be in jail by the end of next month. Ash will get a pardon. Yeah, that's not in herself because she's winning. Ever since she entered the race, fuck, she guaranteed she's gonna win. I mean, this whole past year has been about shaming men and anyone that doesn't think women are the greatest thing of all time, and it's been this big media campaign to force you to want change, to want women in power. But I'm just fucking sick of it. Yep, I'm with you 100, percent man. It's the the media is retarded. I don't trust mainstream media. They're not. They don't do anything for me. I'd rather. I don't need the news. No, my life has been way better ever since I stopped really following the news. Like, I used to be a reporter. That's That used to be a job that I had. And now that I see how fucking just miserable it makes people, how it skews politics, how it warps people's opinions on things, it's fucked up. It's a broken system. Uh, and it's trash. And I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, oh, God. I... I... I don't think she'll legitimately win. I say she may be the president, but I don't think like everyone's going to go out and vote for her. No, it's not going to be legitimate. I I guarantee it. I mean, I think there's a lot of quiet. Wins. I think there's a lot of quiet people that are fed up with the way things are. Like they're tired of being told you can't say Merry Christmas. They're tired of being told you can't do this and that. Like, you know, when I was in college, I was all like, "Yay, Barack Obama, you're the best," and all this other shit. And then I got out in the real world and realized that. Life isn't like they make it out to be, and, like, you're fucking over a lot of people, the majority of people, when you try to pander to, like, that kind of agenda, so, you know. What's nice about liberals is most of them are young and poor, which means they'll spend a lot of time on the internet talking about Hillary, but they won't get motivated enough to go vote for Hillary, and that gives me some comfort. Yep, these tumblerinas and all these other fuckers are, you know, the loudest ones, but, well, we, I mean, we can hope that it just blows up in her fucking face. Like, I don't care about a woman president. Like, that's not what I'm getting at. Because you know somebody's going to listen to this and say, I was with you until this point. Like, I'll tell you this. I, the comments I fucking hate. I don't even read most of the stupid comments we get. Like, I'll read from our good fans, like Guy from Carcosa, Liquid Metal Pro, Brian Lape, Oggs, all those guys. If you're if you're on the show regularly, I always read your comments. Because you, you're, the, you're the demographic I, you know... I record to, like, I sh- uh, give you shout-outs on there, and I care about that stuff. But every once in a while, we get these stupid comments that go, I stopped listening at this point. Well, that's the point I stopped reading your comments. I don't give a fuck what I said that offended you, that you stopped listening. Like, I'm not worried about you type of people, and it's you type of people that are ruining shit, like, ruining entertainment. Like, they're the type of people that are bitching, oh, the Ancient One's a white lady. Who gives a shit? Like, it was cool. They did it right. Plus, the Ancient One's not that important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, and, and here's the thing. I, I'm going to agree with you about it's not because she's a woman. It's because she's Hillary Clinton. Because I, even as a Republican, would vote for Elizabeth Warren. I think she calls out big corporations that fuck people over. I think she has people's interest in mind. Hillary Clinton, who's also a Democrat, is the exact opposite. She talks about how she's for the little guy, how she's a, you know she's for poor people. But she is so corporately sponsored. She's a two-faced lying cunt. She doesn't give a shit about any of us. She sees us all as sheep, and most of us are. Don't don't get, get me wrong. Most of the people in this country are sheep, just looking for a leader to guide them to the slaughter. So it's not about being a female. It's just this particular female is a cunt, a raging cunt with a capital K, because that makes it look scarier. 
Ah, communist cunt. Uh, and no one here has uh, information that could lead to her indictment, do you? So I don't want to like end see any of you dead next week. No, I got some of her emails in my box right now that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You might want to delete those. Those in the dick fix, Dustin. Delete, delete, <laughs> delete. Obsolete, obsolete. <laughs> no, it's just going to be interesting. I've always said off air, like, don't bring up politics because it's been a political year. Yeah. And it's it's always fine if it gets brought up during the uh, you know like entertainment segments because it's it's important it's part of the pop culture landscape like I always say the movies don't matter as much as the fucking story behind the movie like this whole female director blah 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 black writer like they that that's what they market these movies on it's not even that they're good movies anymore they're like oh like Jessica Jones is a shitty TV show for the most part and now they're like oh all female directors for season two who gives a shit. Give me a good fucking story. I don't care if a fucking giraffe directs the fucking second season. <laughs> Give me a quality storyline. Don't sell me on the story behind the story. I, what, what's on camera is what I'm judging it on. I don't, I'm not going to sit down and go, well, I didn't think this season was good, but it was directed by all women, so I'm going to give it a pass. No, because that's actually more sexist than... Uh, <laughs> right. I'm going to like it more because it was directed by a certain gender or a certain race. Uh, who's the fucking racist, sexist... Now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think that is a big problem, and that's why this little last few minutes of this show are getting political. I don't think it'll be like this. Next week we'll bring it up. We'll probably talk about if any big scandal happens or any big event or something that, you know, rigs the election or anything big changes. We are going to talk about it, but we're not a political channel. We're not going to go more than this week and next week into it, so... If you gotta say your stupid comment, oh, I listened to the point where you started talking about politics, like, I really don't care, just keep your comment, that comment to yourself, because you're not doing any good, you're not really fostering any of the, uh, a, a good conversation between, you know, us and our other fans, because, you know what, the other guys really just don't give a shit. Like, this is a time where it's relevant, it's important, uh, if there was a big national tragedy, we'd probably talk about it, you know? Like, if we were a sports show, we'd probably talk about the World Series, but we're not. Because it doesn't affect everyone's lives, but this shit does affect us, so... And one Fuck final thing. Don't go out and listen to the fucking celebrities tell you how to vote. Like, fuck Robert Downey Jr. Exactly. Like, I like Iron Man. That guy can kiss my ass if he thinks I'm going to listen to the way to vote from him. Fuck the, the Daily Show and all those other motherfuckers, too. That's the type of shit that pisses me off, because you said, Dustin, everyone's a sheep. No one really thinks for themselves. Like, I look at this shit, and I can see right through it. It's like, when we were in college, you had... A couple of the guys I would know, especially Garrett and those guys, would be like, they they believed a certain way, they surrounded themselves around certain people, and then they, like, did what they thought was trendy, you know? Like, oh, Jon Stewart's my god, he's, you know, he should be my president, and all this other dumb shit. Like, fuck you, Jon Stewart, you're not even that funny. No, and that's, that's the problem with the media, is that it's everywhere now. It's on your TV, it's on your computer, it's on your phone, and you're constantly being inundated by people who trick you into think they're important, telling you... That if you want to like them, if you want to be like them, you have to do what they do. And they're voting for this person or that person. It's so fucking manipulative. It's such a dog and pony show. Bread and circus. It's fucking ridiculous. You guys need to wake up and realize that you there's a great deception. There's this mass media conspiracy that is tricking everyone into thinking things that are ultimately going to be self-destructive. But right now seem really popular and helpful to you. I promise you they're not. There's no reason that you should listen to any of these motherfuckers, even if you don't think you should listen to us. That's great. Think for yourself. But don't fucking let some person who's in a movie you like dictate who you vote for that's going to make policies that affect your life, your kids' life, my kids' life, just because they're good at acting. If they're good at acting, what does that tell you? They're manipulative. They're dishonest. They're good at tricking people. Don't trust them. I just can't wait for it to be over because I'm fucking tired of hearing about it. Yeah. Oh, I've been following it pretty closely because I give a shit. This is the one year where I'm like, because like, well, I, okay, I give a shit. I'm just, I'm ready for it to be over. I don't think you are though, because it's it could either go one of two ways, with her winning and it goes to shit because we co become too much of a a globalist country, as the conspiracy theorists like to say, or Donald Trump wins and everyone's like, oh, this is so terrible, and it probably wouldn't be as terrible as everyone thinks. Like, I'm not really that much of a Republican person. I think George Bush was an idiot. 2001 to 2009 was a shitty time, but... Uh, but guess what was worse? The Obama era. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's It's been pretty shitty, like... Which is pretty fucked up, considering that he got elected twice. I'm dreading paying I'm that $4,000. I'm shamed 
I'm tired of having to feel shameful for being an American. I'm tired of getting on forums and people talking shit about American. I'm tired of Americans talking shit about Americans. Like, there's this, like, Jeff, like you said, there's this big globalization going on where, oh, we should feel bad for being American. We should feel, feel bad for all the things that our country's done in the past. Don't punish me for stuff that I had no say in. Don't make me feel shameful that I was born on a piece of land and now I have to feel like I owe the world something because some asshole rich people did things in the past. Like, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of America's evil. The world needs to be unified in one big hit. Because then you're going to centralize power. You're going to have less sovereignty. And I'm going to stop talking now because I'm sounding crazy, but I'm, that's how I feel. No, you're not crazy. You're, it's, you basically boiled down what my problem is. Uh, and, and, you know, you're like, oh, this is an entertainment show, what the fuck? Well, guess what? This will directly affect your entertainment, because it already has affected your entertainment. Uh, do you realize, like, Doctor Strange, if we weren't worried about making money in China, did, would the ending of that movie really take place in Hong Kong? <laughs> would, we you know, would, yeah, you'd still have Wong, because he's a part of the thing, and yeah, you'd have the middle, uh, the, the eastern setting because of the, uh, you know, the mystic arts and all that other stuff, but, like, Transformers, those movies are geared towards, uh, international box office and you know it's all about money it's all about uh where the dollar goes and if if america sucked so much people wouldn't worry about making money here i'm not the biggest patriot you'll never hear me say oh you know god bless america and all this shit on air but what you, what you will hear me say is uh it's nice to have freedom of thought and freedom of speech if you For like now. what we gotta say cool if you don't i don't care either i mean i really don't i'm not gonna Go to bed tonight and say, "Oh fuck!" Uh, Mars fan sixteen oh seven said he doesn't like what I said. Like who gives a shit? But I don't like the idea of like, you know, oh the internet's censored, so our show gets taken down because we don't like uh, Wonder Woman or some dumb shit. You know, like it's like you used to say, Dustin. They came for my neighbor and I said nothing, and something something <laughs> else, and then they right. came for me one day and no one spoke up for me. Like that's that's it, you know? Nope. And I know we reach a lot of younger people that because we talk about like cool or hip or trendy or shit. And uh, if you're too young to vote, cool. But you know, think about it in the next four years. You're probably I know some of our listeners that are one of our biggest fans will be old enough to vote in the next election. Like I'm curious to see what you know where we are in four more years. Even if you know if we are a thing in four more years, who knows? Trump's gonna win. It'll be Trump versus Kanye in 2020. Fuck Kanye. <laughs> he could die tomorrow and I wouldn't give a shit. I don't think anybody would give a shit. Not even, even Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. But I'm... S- <laughs> well, now that we got off our political uh, soapbox, soapbox, we have a few more things to say. Brian Lape wants us all drunk for episode 100, so we can do that in a year. Yeah. Uh, Augs for President is starting a hashtag help world class bullshitters grow. Well, if our little diatribe didn't kill the audience, <laughs> uh, thank you, Augs for President. He is watching our videos without ad block. It'd be nice to be able to grow the channel, like, you know, buy some ad space and do some things like that. Or buy some t shirts off of incarnate studios.com. Yeah, like, honestly, people are like, oh, I don't care about t shirts. Well, if you buy a t shirt, and it doesn't have to be a world class bullshitters t shirt, if you buy any of the shirts off that website, you help us because with the extra fucking money, I can uh, put us on Podbean and do all these other things that we want to do with World Class Bullshitters. So, uh, you know, get one for Christmas. Get one as a gift. And if you got a suggestion, let us know too because, you know, I'm all for uh, expanding the repertoire of t-shirts. I mean, we can even beat up John Cena. Yeah, that's a shirt if you're a, a wrestling fan. If you're a fan Fuck of that Rock. guy. Yeah, Nikki Bella does. By the way, Dustin, we saw Nikki Bella in person the other day. Is she as hot as she is on TV? No, mm. she's fucking... She looks more... F- I didn't think she could look more fake. <laughs> the funny part is we were at uh, King's Island, and her security detail fucked up. We could have attacked her <laughs> if we wanted to, because there was a guy about 10 feet ahead of her, and then about 20 or 30 feet behind her, and there was no one else. I could have reached out and popped her tip. You should have. <laughs> And this is the kind of stuff, if you're a new fan, that we talk about on World Class Bullshitters, sexually assaulting female celebrities. Dustin, <laughs> you would have liked her. She looked like one of them Japanese sex dolls. Okay, I'm not into Asians. That's Joel. Well, sex dolls, you like those. Especially that's what I consider all women. <laughs> especially the ones with penises. Dustin likes the path of least resistance, you know. I guess it's Well, no, of- see, that's where I think most people get me wrong. The resistance makes me harder. Oh, okay. So your, <laughs> oh, so your God. Inner, your animal is not Bill Cosby? 
Well, I, you know, I was at a bookstore and I saw an old book of his about love and marriage, and I had to giggle to myself. That's funny. Because I'm sure there's a chapter on roofing. You see, what you do is you put it in your pudding pop, and there you go. You put the, that, that, you put the roofie special. in the pudding pop, and boom! The, 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 she's out. Uh, there's liquid. a special page in the back that peels off. <laughs> Those are the pages of the... <laughs> it's, it's, it's a scratch and sniff page. Does it smell like chloroform? Mm. <laughs> really quick, I want to give a shout out to Reality's Frank and Cape Crusader. Those are two names we didn't bring up earlier, but those guys are always really supportive. Um, oh, yeah. And pretty cool, so... Liquid Metal Pro's a wrestling fan. Yeah. That's cool. He says he would uh, like some wrestling episodes down the road where we make fun of Sasha Banks. Well... Liquid Metal Pro, I got, some, I got some good news for you. I'm not Wade Barrett. Uh, Sasha Banks is garbage. She fucked up on uh, Hell in a Cell. That was a stupid match. It was a stupid pay-per-view. And we always talk about the causes, like I said a minute ago, uh, how people are worried about these stories behind these events to try to, like, you know, these feel-good moments, these history-making moments, blah 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 Oh, we're going to have women main event a pay-per-view. That's cool. We're going to put it in Hell in a Cell. What? Why? And then it's fucking Sasha Banks, who is a terrible, terrible wrestler. She's not coordinated. She's dangerous. Uh, she probably hurt herself. And you know what? The match was shit. I'm so glad Charlotte won. Charlotte's the best wrestler, female wrestler today. Yep. I would love to give a shout out to Charlotte for uh, giving Sasha Banks a great wedgie. Yep. Oh, yeah. Fucking Charlotte does 360 standing mood salts from the top rope to the outside of the ring. I've never seen a girl do that. Lita's nope. done some half assed ones. Charlotte can technically wrestle. She can brawl. She's decent on the mic. She has a cool character. Like, she is the complete package right now. If she looked like Trish Stratus, she'd be the greatest of all time. Yep. And unfortunately, she looks like her father. My biggest problem with her looks are that her hips, they're so narrow, she looks like she's built like a dude. She needs <laughs> to have a kid. Hey. All right. Dustin, you want to volunteer? Uh, so I can make that happen. Hey, I already <laughs> called dibs. No, too late. We already volunteered Dustin. We know literally Dustin's said, semen is good. Li literally said something before we even started giving her to Dustin. I literally. don't care. I don't care. Don't ask I use the eye of Agamotto to... or whatever the fuck you're, it's you're, you're fired, remember? Yeah. Well, if that's the case, I'll get to her for any of y'all. Get to her then before you get, get raped. Get to her then before you get raped. What about your girlfriend up north? I think Ooh. she'll uh, stab you in the chest if you cheat on yeah, her. She she might. Miss Michigan? No, Columbus. Oh, well, I was going Miss Michigan because it's shaped like a hand, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so that was that. Uh, the comments from last week's show. It was our probably our least listened to world-class bullshitters in a while because it was terrible. Hey, yeah. Jeff, hey, have Phil. you checked our at mail account? Our, our mail.com account? Yeah. Let me check that out, Phil, since you bring it up. Uh, let's see, mail.com, the best mail.com. I feel like they should sponsor this show. <laughs> I don't think they can afford us, and we don't charge anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got stupid articles like early voting, tighter race, but still good signs for Clinton. Like, okay. Yeah. Tighter vaginas. God, Tim Kaine's a moron. Anyway, I'm sorry about the political rant. I'm not really sorry. We just got one more week. Because next week, I'm sure Dion's going to be gloating that his kind of a president pulled one out. And then we're gonna have to be... I don't know, Dustin. I really don't think she's going to win. I guarantee she wins. It's, it's a, it is a guarantee. I would, I would sell my house, and I would put all my money on her winning. If she doesn't win, you have to post a picture of her butthole to YouTube. Oh, oh, oh God! That can be the logo for episode fifty. Oh no, can't. The zero. No, we'll put it on our Pornhub account. By the way, we, we have we have so a couple hundred subscribers. Dude, we have a couple hundred <laughs> subscribers on our Pornhub account. Really? Like two thirty six. Well, nice. Do you think people are jacking it to our voice? I hope. I think they just kind of like the stories we tell. <laughs> like we get pretty sexy sometimes. We, we do. do. Sue McLaughlin sent us a direct message and said she's going to start listening to our podcast. Who is that? That's pretty neat. Is she the one that sings Arms of the Angel? <laughs> That's Sarah McLaughlin. In the arms of the angel. Let's see. What do we got here? We got an email from Goop. Goop. Oh, shit, because Dion's not here. Uh, Penn Station replied to my tweet about Free Sandwich Day. And they're just a step above Arby's, I guess. Right, Dustin? The thing about Arby's is twofold. One, 
and we talked about this off air, if you're spending 15 bucks, you're getting half a sandwich. And two, the roast beef looks like my wife's vagina right now. So I don't know if Arby's is good for anyone. Um, Jesus. Is it at least warm? You know, I've only been in it once since she gave birth and uh, did not last long because I had been out of practice. So I think cool. he was talking about the Arby's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was talking about the vagina. Oh, okay, okay. Just uh, I, I can go and look it. If my Arby's is cold, I can take it back and complain. If Dustin's wife's vagina is cold, like, who do you complain to? You take it to Trump. Nobody. Just the fucking just angrily yell at the porn hub as I'm beating off to it. Ah! God damn it, why? You just take her You take her over to Trump Towers, and he'll grab her by the pussy and fix it. <laughs> I don't see the problem with that, because he sounds like a man's man. Yeah, it's, or you, or, it's or you take it to on Donald masculinity, Trump. Dustin. Like, the last masculine guys out there in Hollywood are The Rock. I guess Ryan Gosling, but he's a little effeminate himself, so... I have not saying he, he might turn me. He's that effeminate. Because he kind of looks like... He, I could buy that he, like, sucked somebody's dick in the past. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not even joking. I feel like Ryan Gosling has seen a penis up, up close, close. Or had one in his hands. Maybe his butt cheeks. I don't know. Somewhere. I don't want to believe it. But I could believe it. And by the way, we got a personal email from Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> Would you like me to read it to you guys? I was waiting for it. All right, where did it go? It says, it's me, GP. And Gwyneth says... That's just a fucking ad. <laughs> I hate Gwyneth Paltrow. You mean GP? Yeah. I wish you would have died in real life during the Avengers New York invasion. <coughs> our Twitter's blowing up. We got thousands and thousands of Twitter followers. But our goddamn subscriber count on YouTube has kind of stagnated for the last month. We've been around about, what, 1950? Yeah, now we're up to 1963. And then we'll drop to 1951 again, and then we'll go up to 1960. I would just like to know what the people are unsubscribing for. Like, oh, you said this. Like, I don't care. I'm not going to change what I say, but I would like to know what sent you over the edge so I can say more of it to keep you away. Ghostbusters. So you sent over the edge with Ghostbusters. Oh, fuck those people. Is there a way we can get another... You said we're at 63 right now? Yeah. What does it take for us to get another 37 so that by the time episode 50 rolls around, we're up to 2,000? Because that would be a very cool line to cross on a very, you know... Special. Cool landmark. I would love it. Uh, and Dan said he's going to track down some of those Todd Reaper, Carolina Reaper tortilla chips and eat those on camera for our listeners. And now, I guess they would be viewers. So if you want to see Dan, an asthmatic guy with a bad beard, torture <laughs> himself on air for your entertainment, tell 37 people in a row about us and get us to 2,000 people by next week. Listen, out of 1,960-something subscribers, there's no way that 37 of you don't have one fucking friend. Hell, get on your parents' phones and subscribe. Seriously, I think we should do a giveaway at 2,000. I've tried to get, do giveaways. Some people don't want to take it, but hey, we'll do it. We'll give away Dan's virginity. Uh, Nobody wants that. <laughs> I was saying, I, oh, yeah. Some people are hesitant to take things from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll give somebody a $20 bill wrapped in a turd. Ew. If you can clean the turd off, you get a $20 bill. Do we start doing what other videos do and putting hot girls in the, the thumbnail as clickbait? Do we do we go that route? I don't think so. I think since I did this horror month and it horror is not for everybody, it kind of stayed the same. But once we get back to our normal videos where we bitch about entertainment and superhero movies, we'll be back to our thousands of, video, of views per video. Okay, because I want 2,000. We've been waiting for it for forever. Can you guys help us out? If you're still listening at this point in the video, one, you're fucking cool. But two, it's it's your job, because we've done everything we can do. It is now your job to go out and get some subscribers for us. And if you can prove, if you can get like references that say, oh, this person brought me to the channel. If you can prove that you were one of the people that boosted us up to 2,000, honestly, we will send you a gift. Or we will make a video curtailed to whatever your interests are. We will reward you in some way. Just fucking help us. I will give you the most rigorous of hand jobs. That yeah. is going to lose us subscribers. I <laughs> people want something that's, actually. That's Dion's job, damn it. 
Prove yeah, it. If you can help us get to 2,000, and you can prove that the people that subscribed were because of you, you will be rewarded. You just I'll be your fucking genie in a bottle. You ask, we'll make it happen. If you rub Dustin's belly, he'll give you three wishes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gift. Uh, yeah, so that was this week's show. Uh, come back next week. I have no clue what we're going to do. It'll be episode 50. It'll be our biggest episode yet. Maybe we'll play some more Fuck, Mary Kill. I'm sure Dion will have rushed out to see Doctor Strange by this point, so he'll give his thoughts. And uh, be on the lookout for more of our drunk commentaries. Like I said in our in the Wonder Woman video, we're going to do superhero drunk commentaries. A lot of the listeners requested specific films, but here's the thing. If I pick good movies, none of us are going to really talk during the commentary because we like those movies. So we had a request for the Spider-Man trilogy. And by the way, Spider-Man 3 is on the list. <clears throat> And we had a request for Civil War, and uh, I would just pay attention to the whole movie and would probably have very little to say. So we're going to do bad ones like Batman and Robin, Jonah Hex, Green Lantern, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. The list. We're going to probably do eight of them for the month. And then I got a video coming out. I'm going to rank every Marvel movie. That's 45 movies, so make sure you listen to that one. That's going to be a whole week's event. And uh, maybe I'll do some other reviews. We'll talk about some other shit this month. So... Uh, horror movie month was whatever. Superhero movie month should be good. So, thanks for listening, and uh, I've been your host, Jeff Hicks. <coughs> I've been the doctor, Phil Seitz. Don't forget to brush your ass. I've been Coach Loudy. Feel free to comment in the comments below what you want a life lesson on while I go and steal your girlfriend. Rim jobs. Uh, my name's Dustin. I actually just got a new life goal. I met a guy who is on disability for diabetes, so shooting for that. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Phil, quit your job. Get on disability. There you go. No, I make more at my job. No, listen to this asshole. You elitist scum. I make more. Go see Doctor Strange. Don't forget to buy a t-shirt. Get some strange. And don't mistake this movie for Dr. Strange Love. And tune in for the 50th episode of the World Class Bullshitters. Hitters, hitters.